Kenan, nice to see you. It's good to see you, Tom. I'm so excited that you're back to see what I've done with uh, what you've given me here. This is awesome. It's coming along really nice. I love what you did with all the little rocks around the front. Yeah, you know, I had this uh, stockpile of materials and I thought, let me make a border so that when I mow, I have a definitive edge. And what I kind of think will happen, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, these plants are going to mature and they're really going to kind of take over this hair area. I've been nicknaming this the Godzilla Garden because we've got Godzilla hanging there. Um, and, and I think, like you said, like in a few months, this is really going to blossom once we get a lot of heavy rains. Uh, and basically, I think after a few years, it'll really just fill in and obscure a lot of the rocks, but still give me uh, this, this potential to make pathways and things. So I'm pretty excited about it. I added a few more. I added a bird of paradise. You got me all, you got me all geeked out on planting now, bud. We're still trying to establish them. These plants still need to get established. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of tough when you plant in the dry season. Um, it's better to plant when it's cooler, I guess. Um, but the we need the rain. We need that rain to come back because it's been just so incredibly hot. I love the allocation. Um, these are a lot of fun and I can't wait. You sent me photos where these are just massive and I just can't wait to see that because that's very Jurassic Park if you ask me. So this right here, I can tell by looking at them, they're a little pale, it's a little bright for them. Okay. And like I said, once we get the rains and the afternoon clouds, it'll be okay. much better. Okay, so uh, you know that's something I gotta think about. I do want these guys to flourish, so perhaps I can plant some larger tree over here that can kind of sprout up and give these guys cover is, is kind of what I'm hoping to do. I really want to create the proper ecosystem for the plants as well. It's uh, my goal for the animals, uh, so it's got to become my goal for the plants. Um, and so that's what I'll try and do, you know, I'll try and get another group of maybe um, some really tall banana plants or something like that that grows quickly uh, that could potentially give us the canopy we need. I want to create a jungle. Uh, I do want canopy. So I figured, I, kn I knew that would get big, but this was my thinking, if it can get big and kind of take over one spot, it'll, it'll allow this, uh, almost like the cage doesn't exist. And you kind of walk around. I, it's just a thought I had. I'm just, I'm just guessing here, buddy. Uh, but you brought me some new stuff here. Let's see what oh, you got. Yes. So, so you brought me some things um, that are gonna, enhance the universal rocks. I've got you these these mosses. I, I, I love these mosses. If you can get these like growing along a stream bed or something or growing in the shade, they will do, and you got all different, you got, you got avatar moss and ruby moss, and this is called peacock moss. If it's too sunny, it's all gonna turn brown. Okay. But if the, if the color's right, it turns kind of this turquoise. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely plant those along some of the aquascape ecosystems. I so, think that'll be nice. You do bromelias. Now these are, you told me earlier, these are for the shade. Where would you think looking around? Like, I mean, this is a nice shade here. Can I do something by this tree? What do you oh, think? Oh, yes. I would say try it. Never be afraid to try. Okay, so so we got some, maybe you could color up this tree. I, I just love this ficus tree here. But, but even still, I've got, you know, uh, a lot of rock over here. And just, they do so well when you wedge them in the rock. So I yeah, think Yeah, you could fun. even, um, Put a little mulch, put whatever your little stones, a little mulch, and plant them in. Very cool. If, if it looks good, I can bring you more. Okay, very I can cool. bring you more when Ed comes, so you just let me know how they're doing. I, I took over uh, the camera work here at Holt Nurseries. That's pretty good. How do we do? Oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this right here is all different types of pilea. These are pilea ground covers. Okay. And, and, and what I can do, I can actually plant these into universal rocks? Yes. We could plant one or two, and then you're no welcome way. to plant the rest. Later. No way, that's so then, cool. Show me how I'm gonna actually, we'll just take one for an okay. example, because I just wanna see like, for example, this area, what I'm thinking, tell me if you think I have the right, uh, the right, you know, idea. Now, do I want to fill this little pocket with dirt, or do we wanna cut a hole, put a larger pot in, uh, how do we want to kind of get this established uh, into something like this? You're saying this will creep all over it? Yeah, so I would definitely not cut a hole in it. Just, just fill this, if you can, a little bit of dirt. Okay. And then, and then you could plant you could plant, plant it. it right into it. Yep. That's perfect. There's another one. If you look over here, check this out, guys. This is what's cool about the Universal Rock. Um, you know, we could just get some potting soil, I would imagine. And then look at that. That'll be great. And then it'll just start to creep out all over this. So that's, that's really cool. 
Um, I'm excited about that. That'll be a fun project. Uh, maybe I'll get the kids involved in that because it is summertime. So we'll get these kids to work becoming uh, horticulturists. Uh, so very cool. So I've got a lot of little pockets that this will come in handy, man. I, I appreciate it. I love this. Uh, this is a fun friendship, you know. Um, when you're ready for turtles, you let me know, bud. We'll get you some little turtles. But this is this is a lot of fun. I could I can also plant this on the inside of the cage. There's Slinky. He's coming over to see oh, what we're I doing. I love Slinky. Yeah, Slinky's the best. We gotta say hello. You gotta have Slinky on your channel, dude. Gotta say hello to the dude. All your animals come to you. How much time do you spend with them? I spend a lot of time. I mean, it's been many years with Slinky, so um, he's pretty intelligent. He knows, as long as you uh, are constantly reinforcing him with happy things like food, uh, then he will come on over. So, so he is just an amazing animal. And he knows that there's no food, so he's kind of not coming over as, uh, you know, gregariously as he normally does. But he is going to wallow on over just to see what we're up to. Slinky is a true giant of the monitor world. He's an Asian water monitor. Uh, and he, that species is the second largest in the world next to the Komodo dragon. That's Socrates, man. I got Socrates in 2005 and um, nice, slow, steady growth. That's what I'm looking for. And turns out Socrates is most likely a female. And right behind Socrates, if you pan up, you'll see Darwin. Darwin is a 30-year-old Bob Ghost tortoise. Got her from Marin County, California. I flew out there and uh, I actually flew her back on a Delta flight and it was awesome. So we got these two in here and there's an Aldabra running around somewhere, but he might be too shy. Well, this is so cool because, you know, I got the gardens and what I really want to do is have a little zoo element to yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love having the plants. It's, it's reversed. I have the animals. I want to have a garden, and uh, that's why our friendship has been so much fun, because we can help each other out. Oh, this is fantastic. It was a pleasure visiting with you again, and I'll see you in three weeks. All right, buddy. See you soon. See ya. Well, yesterday we just went to Kennan's. I saw his water monitor slinky, and here's my water monitor, yet still to be named. He's really settled down quite a bit, and he has become a wonderful pet. When I first got him, he would come out of his log, he would eat his food, and then tail whip me three times. And after two or three months, he is a wonderful pet. He, I can pick him up almost any time, and he's very, very gentle. Well, maybe I'll go get him some lunch. We will see you next week and don't forget to like and subscribe.